basically all of the ingredients necessary uh, to make life multiplanetary will be achieved with version three of Starship, which we're aiming to launch for the first time at the end of this year. The Block 3 Starship is coming, but it's not just the rocket that's getting an upgrade. An entirely new launch pad is being built to support it. SpaceX calls it Pad B, and construction is already underway at Starbase, Texas. So, how different will Pad B be compared to the current launch infrastructure? And more importantly, will it be ready in time? Pad B at Starbase is the second launch pad at SpaceX's launch facility in Texas. It is being built on the site of the former suborbital launch pad, which served as the primary location for Starship's early suborbital flight testing. This includes the Star Hopper tests and the first high altitude flight test with SN8 on December 9, 2020. In May 2024, an FAA filing confirmed that a second launch tower would be constructed at Starbase located near the site of the old suborbital tank farm where piling work had already begun. Following the completion of OLEAT No. 3's foundation work over the preceding months, the first base column was lifted into place on June 13, 2024, with the final base column installed just two days later on June 15. Over the following month, the base structure was reinforced with steel plates, concrete, and footings to support the tower segments. On July 11, 2024, the first tower module was stacked, and by August 21st, the final module was installed, completing the full stacking of the new launch tower in just 41 days. At first glance, the new tower may not look much different from the one at Pad A, but in reality, it features several key upgrades. After all, this tower is being built to eventually support the much more powerful Block 3 Starship, so the first major upgrade is reinforcing the launch tower to make it significantly stronger. Although the tower appears to be made entirely of steel from the outside, it is actually a concrete core structure with an all-metal base integrated into it. Only specific parts, such as the quick disconnect arm and the chopsticks, are made entirely of dark gray steel trusses. This robust structure is engineered to withstand potential pad explosions caused by a super heavy booster. Like the original launch tower, Pad B's Mechazilla system uses actuators on each arm to control movement. However, the chopstick arms on Integrated Tower B feature a shorter design. SpaceX has already tested this by successfully catching both Booster 12B12 and Booster 14 closer to the tower on OLPA. The shorter arms not only reduce manufacturing costs, but also improve operational speed. To further enhance strength, SpaceX has equipped the arms with a new traveling block system. A traveling block is a movable component in a block and tackle system consisting of pulleys or sheaves through which the wire rope, also known as the drill line, is threaded. While Launch Tower 1 used a traveling block with five reeving loops, Pad B has been upgraded to a block with seven reeving loops, increasing its load capacity and efficiency. As of now, Pad B's chopstick arms are the only ones currently configured for a ship catch, featuring a smaller lip on the landing rails designed specifically for that purpose. Most of the fundamental parts of the Pad B launch tower are already in place. SpaceX is now working on final touches, such as adding cladding over the structure to protect the tower's internal components from environmental factors like weather. This is especially important given Starbase's coastal location. The cladding also gives the tower a more finished and aesthetically pleasing appearance. Beneath integrated tower B is the orbital launch mount. The orbital launch mount, OLM, serves as the platform that supports Starship during liftoff. It features 20 clamps that hold the booster securely in place before launch, along with a quick disconnect system that supplies liquid fuel and electricity. Unlike the large circular ring design used on Pad A, Pad B's OLM is built in a massive square configuration. It includes a water-cooled steel plate on its top level to help mitigate heat buildup on the deck. This water-cooled plate is similar to the one currently in use at Pad A, but in this case, it is integrated directly into the top of the OLM itself. This addition is expected to significantly reduce turnaround times because it provides pad protection using large volumes of water directly on the OLM.
This approach differs from Pad A, which experiences considerable wear with each launch. To further minimize post-launch repairs, SpaceX has also opted to construct a flame trench beneath the OLM. This trench is a reinforced, heat-resistant channel designed to redirect and dissipate the intense exhaust and thermal energy generated during liftoff. The redesigned system was mentioned by Elon Musk in June 2024. Foundation work began on January 13, 2025. Excavation reached its full depth in early February. Concrete was poured in March, and the first wall sections for the trench were installed on March 21st. In April, diverter buckets and the initial support columns were added. Some sources indicate that Pad B's deluge system will use Methalox gas generator pumps to pressurize the system. A Methalox preburner partially combusts methane and liquid oxygen to produce a hot, high-pressure exhaust gas. This gas is typically a mix of CO2, H2O, and some unburned reactants. It is commonly used in rocket engines to power turbo pumps. As the gas expands and cools through a turbine, it spins a rotor that generates mechanical shaft work. This mechanical energy can then be used to drive another component, such as a pump or compressor, which is responsible for handling liquid nitrogen and producing gaseous nitrogen. At Massey's, SpaceX runs liquid nitrogen through ambient water in heat exchangers. In contrast, Pad A uses gas vaporizers and stores the resulting nitrogen gas in high-pressure tanks. A very important part of Pad B that has not been mentioned much, but is essentially connected to all the other facilities, is the Tank Farm. The Orbital Launch Site, OLS, Tank Farm, functions as the primary storage facility for liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which serve as propellants for both the Starship and Super Heavy rockets. In addition, it also stores liquid nitrogen for subcooling and water for the deluge system. The tank farm is interconnected with nearly every major component, from the Orbital Launch Mount OLM to the Orbital Launch and Integration Tower. This setup enables fueling of both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship's second stage through the booster quick disconnect on the OLM and the ship quick disconnect on the tower. You could say it is the heart of the site. Pad B shares the same storage tanks as Pad A. However, there will be significant differences in the pump and subcooler configurations. While Pad A uses five pumps and eight subcoolers for liquid oxygen and four pumps with four subcoolers for liquid methane, Pad B will operate with only three subcoolers in total, two for oxygen and one for methane. These subcoolers will be larger and designed for enhanced efficiency, incorporating valuable lessons learned from Pad A's operations. The propellants will flow through a series of pumps before entering a valve area, where they will be routed to the appropriate subcoolers. After subcooling, the propellants will pass through vacuum jacketed piping housed within the large commodities trench. Once they reach the area behind the tower, the lines will split to direct the flow to both the launch tower for the spacecraft and the OLM for the booster. Progress at Pad B is moving along really well, and I strongly believe it will be ready for a Starship Block 3 launch later this year. What I'm wondering is whether it will be ready soon enough for the first ever Starship catch. If Ship 37 survives the full flight during Flight 10, there's a high chance SpaceX could attempt the first catch using the final Block 2 vehicle. Do you think that's actually going to happen? Let me know in the comments. Also, I noticed we're almost at our goal of 10,000 subscribers, so please hit that subscribe button right now to help us get there. Thank you. Meanwhile, modification work at Launch Pad A to convert it into a static fire test stand is still going strong. For a while, many of us have been wondering how SpaceX would connect the pad to the ship. The existing ship, Quick Disconnect at Pad A, is positioned too high on the tower, making it difficult to function effectively with the current setup. Additionally, the Booster QD on the Orbital Launch Mount uses a completely different interface. Well, now we have the answer. A square hole has been cut into the lower section of the Booster QD to allow for a new connection. New propellant lines and support structures are being installed 
to link up with a modified ship QD, which will be used to fuel ships for static fire testing. At the same time, heavy steel plates are being welded around the edges of the modified ship transport stand. This is, of course, to withstand the extreme flame power of the ship's Raptor engines during a static fire test. It's suggested that this temporary test stand system is welded just strong enough to handle the testing, but can be removed afterward. To further reduce the cost of the Starship program and ensure a more reliable supply chain, Starbase will soon begin producing its own propellants. Cameron County has approved SpaceX to build an air separation unit at its Starbase facility to support the production of liquid oxygen and nitrogen, two key components of Starship's fuel systems. The plant is being constructed at 7245 Industrial Circle, Lot 6, on a 72-acre site within the North Brownsville Industrial Park. On average, that's about a 43-minute drive from Starbase. Once operational, this air separator will allow SpaceX to locally produce and supplement its supply of liquid oxygen and nitrogen, reducing reliance on third-party deliveries. It will be located near Starship's two launch towers at Starbase, Texas. This development is expected to significantly reduce the number of truck deliveries required. Currently, each Starship launch involves at least 200 trucks transporting various consumables, from inert nitrogen gas to highly combustible liquid oxygen and methane, down Texas State Highway 4, also known as Boca Chica Boulevard. By producing propellants on site, SpaceX may not only streamline launch logistics, but also reduce wear and tear on the highway. Anyone who has driven the long road to Starbase knows how rough it can get, with plenty of potholes caused in part by the heavy traffic. SpaceX initially planned to build its own air separation plant, first at the Sanchez site and later at the Starbase launch and testing site. However, these plans were eventually abandoned due to several challenges, including an insufficient electricity supply and practical concerns, such as the plant's close proximity to the launch pad. 